So in our in our giant audience here, who's heard of used whatever origin has before? Okay. So you don't have to put your hand up if you know you don't have to feel pressured to put your hand up. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know the differences between all the different the trials, field trials, and okay. Uh, I'm I'm happy to talk about that. Just to, so just want to know, you know, how 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 much I should go into detail. So title says roadmap. That's roadmap in the loosest possible sense, where um, I'm actively gathering feedback to try and prioritize what you know what we could do to make. Um, origin trials more useful to people. So if you've been at BlinkCons before, this is the literally the exact same slide that I've had in my had in this presentation for a couple going back, but just to set the stage. So origin trials started as this idea to help um, help Chrome folks iterate better on on features. So we use the canonical example of vendor prefixes and how that was not a good time for most anyone. Um, the the breaking case, we talk about app cache, how we designed this thing, this feature called app cache, and it was gonna be awesome. And then we put it out there and then went, oh wait, this is not the thing we wanted at all. And back to the drawing board and later came service worker and whatever. So the idea is to have a way to get the whole point is to get meaningful developer feedback um, before we commit to a thing. Uh, and so Origin Trials was the the solution to that, um, there are a few points. Some of the things we tried to build into the principles, the infrastructure, the process, so that we could iterate safely. Um, you know, the big thing being not avoiding burn-in. So a lot of the, lot of the, whether you call them warts or features of the framework and the infrastructure today, are really about preventing burn-in. Um, and in some cases, there are things we came up with as ideas three years ago as this is how we'll prevent burn in. And so, you know, some have worked, some maybe are just adding friction without a lot of value. So totally open to um, talking about, you know, what, how, if we could change while protecting kind of some of those principles. So, um, and uh, Brian, I yeah, see, Brian. had a question about, hey, what, I hear all these trials, trials, trials going on. So um, I'll try and, Pull from my memory. So in past, in past, uh, Blinkons would talk about um, there are where origin trials fits in. So there's about flags, right? And so that is an example where a user can opt in to use a specific a, a specific feature. Then there's field trials or Finch, which at the other end is essentially Chrome engineers opting some percentage of sites in to use a feature. And so then origin trials fit kind of in the middle where it's, this is the web developer opting in to use a feature. So that's kind of the analogy I use. Um, so some brief stats, uh, everyone likes charts apparently. I was just gonna write some numbers on a slide. So I, clearly people are raising the bar, so I did a chart. Um, what's that? I, yes, wow. <laughs> Actually it was a line graph, so that wouldn't work nearly as well um, but before. Um, so we have, this is just Blink on 10. I had some stats up when I gave this talk of Blink on 10, that's the left. Apparently I'm not that good at charts, I lost the label. Um, and on the right is where we are kind of today. So basically, I think it was roughly 300 some unique origins had registered as of about in April. We're now up over around 1200. Um, and then tokens is just number of tokens we've issued, which includes both when you first register and when you renew. And then the yellow column, the last one is again, how, how many renewals we've seen. So generally we've, it's about four X in, increase um, between April and now, and that's with roughly the same number of active trials. Obviously new trials come in, trials finished. We had 26, I think in April, now we're at about 24. So looks like, you know, up and to the right, if this was a this was a chart, um, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, interesting enough is if you look at these, we get lots of people register, and I forget what the percentage is. We don't get a ton of renewals, so maybe that's an opportunity either for how we run trials or to make it easier so that we don't get kind of a drop off where people sign up once and then don't continue through the length of the trial. Maybe that's okay because they try it and they find out what they need to learn. But um, the, the, the reason 
I think more renewals would be better is because renewal is when we collect feedback. And so maybe that's also too much friction that is stopping people from renewing. So these are all questions I would like to answer. So what's new uh, since April? Kind of the biggest thing is um, we're using trials for different things. So the intent was using them for experimentation with new features. Uh, now we're starting to use, we're using them more for deprecations and interventions. I'll talk a bit more about that. So I'd mentioned Web Components V0 in April, but now with M80 is when the rubber is hitting the road in that um, we're actually gonna try and turn off some of the Web Components features. And now you will absolutely positively have to use the origin trial. So I should back up. The idea with, with uh, using it for deprecations is that we want to turn off a feature, i.e. some of the web components be zero. But there's, you know, developers need time to migrate their sites. So the idea is you can sign up for, for a deprecation trial, and that will let you keep using the feature, even though we've turned it off by default. So it's kind of the flip side of experimenting with a new feature. Um, so like I said, web components v0 is the big one. And there's also uh, re very recently, um, we're trying to, to disallow s doing sync XHRs and page dismissal. So again, we have a, a basically a escape hatch for that. The other thing now is, is uh, for interventions. So very recently, they launched a page freezing intervention, which you know there's a it's heuristic based to say, well, this tab looks like it's the background, it's not doing anything, can we freeze it? Um, and there we now have an opt in and an opt out. So maybe we find out a site finds out the heuristics break. Um, even though they're pretty, they've done a lot of work to make sure the hair sticks won't break anyone, but so you can opt out and say, no, 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 please don't. You can also opt in if you think, wow, this really shouldn't affect me. Now I can force the intervention on and, and try and, and try it with my site to make sure. So that's the biggest change in terms of origin trials. We haven't changed a whole lot in the infrastructure, but we're seeing these new usages. Okay. So what's next? Uh, like I said, really, I'm, I'm um, as the team responsible for origin trials, really just saying, how can we increase the reach and our effectiveness? And it's really, how can we make it of better value to the teams consuming it? How can we make it easier slash better for developers? Um, so some of the things we're thinking about at a high level is, um, you know, how can we, how can we change the process or the policy around to get more participation in the trials. Uh, so, you know, one example, and I think this this might have come up in the talk with Sam and others yesterday, right? Like it's it can be a big lift or a big ask to ask someone, here's a thing, we don't know if we're gonna ship it. Please write all this code and use it, right? So, you know, there's predictability about when it will hit uh, stable. There's also, um, you know, we have usage limits, which, are fairly generous, but might be might be a problem for folks. There's also the big thing that comes up is we we kind of have this one, well, kind of we have a policy around having a one week break in availability. So if you're in M80, let's say their trial ends in M80, and you intend to ship to stable in M81, then we basically force the trial to end a week before the the, the estimated stable date. So this the idea behind that was. You can't rely on the feature being 100% available. So that gives an out to the feature author to say, OK, great. We are going to ship, but we learned some stuff. We need to break, make breaking changes. We wanted to remove like disincentives to making breaking changes. So that was the intent behind the one week break. Is it having the desired effect? Maybe. Are there other mechanisms we could use that would reduce the friction for web developers, yet protect that you know ability to make breaking changes? Maybe. So that would be an example. Um, and again, process and pause around these new types of trials, interventions, deprecations, or breaking new ground. We're kind of figuring out as we go. Um, certainly be better to have something repeatable for, for the future. And then again, just making it easy, easier for feature teams to, to, to use the, um, the, the infrastructure. So I just thought I'd run through. Here's some of the things we've heard as, as pain points and, you know, Love to hear more. Uh, so for web developers, you know, we've heard this a couple times. It's all well and good if you're running an origin trial for a new JavaScript feature. Our answer was always, well, how do you, how do I code defensively? Well, you do feature detection, obviously. 
But if it's something, you know, we've had experiments with new HTTP headers, you know, maybe it's a behavior change, not observable from JavaScript, how do you feature detect? So that's come up because they want to make sure they have whatever fallback in place. You know, debugging why we say, here's this opaque token, this, this string, make sure it's on your page. Feature's not working, what? Um, so that could be, maybe you didn't request for the right origin, maybe you're not serving it appropriately. So having some kind of dev tool support or some way to figure out. Uh, token management, so again, the way it works, you, you know, you, uh, right now we're, it's, you have to sign in with a Google account, one person logs it, registers, they get a token. But you know, especially for enterprise developers, like, well, actually, it's a team, and we really don't want our token to expire. So, what if that person's on vacation, right? You know, can we share them, or we we kind of have a static one week before the token expires, we'll send you a reminder email. Um, what if it takes me two weeks to roll out a change to my, inf my my serving infrastructure, right? Like, that's not enough time. So, those are some of the things we've heard about around token management. Um, We've heard as a framework developer, what if I don't control the, um, what if I'm embedded on multiple origins, right? You can imagine I'm a framework, I wanna try out a feature on some percentage, but I don't know all the origins that are gonna be hosting me. You know, could we have a JavaScript API to let us inject tokens or, or something like that, right? It is possible to inject tokens essentially by writing script to slam a meta tag, but it's still, you have to have a token that matches the hosting origin, not the script. Uh, so from Blink developers, we're getting a little better, but you know, just being able to get access to the data um, in a non really rough, why don't you write a SQL query um, approach, that's one thing. Um, whether or not feature authors recognize it, I've seen you know, one out of every 10, whatever uh, features that come through the pipe, they actually haven't tested their integration, and then it's like, oh, we're going, to, we're going to beta, we're going to stable. Why isn't the feature working? It's like, ooh, did you test Dell? And you know, something's missing in the integration. Um, and then kind of going back to that one week breakage, like helping feature teams work with partners to really manage expectations around, you know what experimental means in this, in this case, right? Again, so, so I just ran really quickly through. So some ideas that are le more or less well-formed, um, and this is where I'd love to you know, hear questions, comments, input. Um, you know, so we do have a capability, at least for Googlers, to easily send out emails to everyone who's registered in a, in a trial fairly easy, easily. Um, but what we don't have is Hey, I want to know which or who registered that origin. Can I talk to that person directly? Right. So you know things like that. Um, you know, way back when we kind of envisioned publishing reports, uh, status updates on on intent to experiments. Like, hey, we ran the trial for this long. Here's the feedback we got, and, and etc. We haven't been doing that. Partially, there's privacy. Partially, there's making it easy to collect results. Um, you know, this idea of how do we make sure all the I's are crossed and the T's are dotted as you go through the process. So those just are a few things kind of off the top of my head. But um, my goal is to send out a survey soon to to, any, to you know Blink folks to get get input. Um, but certainly would love to have people suggest. Well, you're like my life. I would love to run a trial, but or I ran a trial. It would have been so much better if I could have done this. Um, would really love to to get feedback. So that, that's basically it. I just want to kind of run through quickly and highlight some of the pain points. So I kind of open it up for discussion or questions or I can ramble on ad nauseum. So that's probably not what anyone wants. The feedback that you get when, when you run a trial, is it normally just sort of pros, like we liked this, we didn't like this, or are, have, have there been examples of origin trials that have had really strong uh, logging data, like, you know, we, we, we entered the origin trial, we did this A-B test, you know, with this right. feature, we saw this benefit. Like, what are you, what counts as success? And I know that's going to be different from trial to trial. Yeah, so uh, if I, so I'll just, can we see that? Yeah. Um, all my test data here, let's see. So generally speaking, we we haven't, 
we haven't had people do like a b tests really rigorous or really detailed like a, a numerical analysis of results part of the problem is getting um, enough participation to have meaningful results part of it is i think you know this is going back to helping feature authors so i don't know if i pick a random one that's not a good one to pick uh I'm trying to I'm trying to find a survey. There we go. Um, so kind of what we what we do is for every trial we have a template for the surveys that go out, and then we say, "Hey, feature team, if you want to customize this, let's let's go nuts." But what's what often happens is we don't see a lot of customization right now, so that's really small. But um, so you know we kind of have the standard template. Like, that you know so there's a combination of hey tell us some pros but let's try and capture some you know common how easy was it how likely are to keep using it so ideally we can generate some numbers um and and compare both have feature teams have numbers they can look at but also have kind of standard numbers we can compare across trials but we haven't had a lot of success kind of generating really actionable feedback that way that is a goal but Still searching, um, searching for answers. Yeah, so I was curious about the um, site you were just at. It's like developers.chrome.com. Yeah. Is that how you could opt yourself into particular as a user and is tied to the Google account? Like, how does it? Yeah. Okay. So this, so this we built. This we call well, we generally call it the Origin Trials Console. At least that's what I call it. Okay. Um, and so yeah, then the idea is. You'll 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 see links to this in blog posts. Even Chrome Status will you know can link here. But yeah, you you'll somehow you'll know about or you'll come browse and find a feature a feature you care about, and then you can just register. And then once you do that, you know then you can come back later and you can see well what are all the things I registered for. So um, so basically it'll show you active trials, completed trials, and the things you've registered for. So this would be how you you'd, you'd opt in. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so for those who haven't seen, the idea is I, I talked about tokens. You get this magical blob of text that that's what you have to serve on here. And Anybody like the feedback that you showed there, like I could give feedback about something. What if I'm not doing a trial and I just go in there and I say like uh, with tab hovers, that was something they turned off with a mm. hot fix for Chromium 78. So I noticed it was on and we got some feedback from our users and then it got turned off uh, for the feature flag by default, the default setting. And so can I go in there as a user and say like, I hate this feature, this is, you know, right? or is it feedback about the trial? This, so what we generally try and do, and you can see on this page, uh, wrong, um, is we will collect that survey I showed you as part of the renewal process. But we, what we really want to do, and that's why you'll see this kind of feature feedback link, is we want to try and direct like general purpose feedback okay. towards whatever existing community there might be for that feature. So then there's flexibility for feature teams to, you know, get out of band feedback or or whatnot, right? Yeah, or deal with like bugs or something like an issue, create an issue for it. Yeah, like cool. so th this like this fits better with new features for like getting spec feedback, but the idea is you can kind of plug in what makes sense for your feature. Um, I actually just had a quick question about the feedback. You mentioned that the renewals were lower. Do you have any data or have you seen how many people start to fill out the survey and don't complete it? Or if that's a barrier to renewals or people are just like, one trial is enough? Yeah, we, we, um, I, we haven't done that in a systematic way. So before we had the origin trials that this, we were just doing a forums-based thing. And so a couple times, you know, it was a little different. Like we kind of manually combed through the feedback we got because we also used to ask questions about our own trials itself. And um, you know, you did get feedback. Why do I have to enter this all the time? Um, but no, we haven't. We haven't done like across the board. We've kind of just anecdotally looked to see. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So with uh, when when you're registering there and you you provide the origin, is that um, is that for your user or can you actually provide, like if I own a website and I can prove I own a website, can I for like not force, but uh, push the trial to other Chrome customers? Like I, it's a little unclear to me 
like you know it showed the domains there like the origins yeah. in, in your developer.chrome yeah yeah so you can register essentially we don't require you to prove ownership over the domain because the theory being will like anyone could reg could register google.com but unless you can somehow get code served on google google.com the token is useless to you um, so we don't oh, okay so the tokens actually used on the site that's the part i might have missed yes. so yes. makes sense yep. yeah so otherwise the token is just you know a base 64 encoded string that's no good unless it's actually served in the context of the site cool Do you have any uh, idea on how to solve the framework uh, problem? Like um, if I sell a widget and I want to run my code in different origins, um, we, we, we have that use this coming from a customer, so a customer I, we, if you had a solution to this problem, we would buy it. Yes, right. So I was actually just talking with Dave Tapuska about this the other day because he similarly has a customer that would totally buy it if, if it was available. So um we're kind of what we're kicking around is well is there any reason we couldn't just have a javascript api so that as long as your script running in the top like you can already you can already embed a token and via script right you can say add meta tag and we'll pick it up what the missing piece is that yes is the origin so we kind of said well what if what if we had a JavaScript API so that any script could call it? And then what we would do instead is we would take the token, we would match it against the origin of the script, like whatever context it was running in, ma match it against the origin of that rather than of the hosting page. So that's kind of a whiteboard sketch of an idea. So the ch the reason we, we didn't do something like this in the very beginning is what we didn't want is, hey, Framework X signs up for an origin trial, and now it's enabled for the entire internet, right? So we'd still be relying on the, fr the framework to do some kind of um, segmenting so that they are you know, only doing it on some percentage for usage reasons. But fundamentally, it's no different than, uh, like, like way back in the early days, I, someone was, you know, might have been like, um, search if someone was running an origin trial for, I think it was a long task uh, API. And so they did, all they did was, okay, I know I want to try it on these 10 origins. I'm going to request tokens for those 10 origins and serve those tokens. So you fundamentally have the same problem of relying on people not to abuse it. So it's really just what could we do for frameworks that would solve the use case and not make it trivially easily to like blow out usage limits so that we have to turn, turn off trials. Oh, interesting. So you're saying, like, maybe if I'm a framework developer, I can capture some of my ten top most largest partners or clients. Yes. And I can say, like, I'm gonna because I know my JavaScript runs on that thing. I can create tokens for those origins, and then yes. I can act on behalf of them. Oh, interesting. That I mean, that's that that that's kind of a neat solution to us. Yeah. So that that that's scalable if it's you know, let's say less than ten, and you know which origins they are. In the one example. The one example, one person we were talking about, like, well, we are on thousands of origins. We don't really know. What we know is we want to try this on 10% of traffic, kind of. So you could imagine some kind of client-side sampling that they would do for when they enable the trial. Another unrelated question, but um, I, I wonder, do you have any data on how many origin trials are extended and the reason why they're extended? Uh, yes, I kind of went through this exercise earlier this year to manually compile. Um, I'd ha I don't know if I can pull it up, but I can get it to you later. But Bob, Bob Park, do you have a, a sentiment about what, why they, is it yeah. fair to character, characterize that as a, 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 a it, it, I get the perception that people characterize that, that as a, as a failure of, a, of the, of the, like extending seems like a bad thing. I don't know why. I don't know that it's a bad thing. I think I think you just don't want to do it a indefinitely, b all the time, right? So, um, like I talk about web web VR fell into this where 
whether by extension or new trials, but essentially it ended up being like 18 months worth of trial, right? Oh, and we said, yeah, that's, we don't want that. So I don't know if it's a bad, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't say it's a bad thing because it depends on the context, right? Like, hey, what we've seen is, um, you know, you have a partner, a big partner, like with a Google internal partner, or even there was one case, you know, I don't know, it was one, it was one of the, a big external site. And it's like, you know what, we just, yes, the trial is ready. It's that example of, but we didn't quite land our, our, our production code to use the trial. So we need more time to collect data, right? So you do run into these timing mismatches where, so I'm like, what we really want is data. They're going to give us the data. So it makes sense to extend it for another milestone or two so we can collect said data. I mean, I was just wondering as, as part of the process, perhaps you, you could gate um, entrance to origin trials on having developers that are, have already implemented and are ready to deploy. Yeah. Like you could, you could have a, a procedural device to say like, you do not get, cause I know that if you don't have partners yet that you're going to in three quarters, you're not in, in two quarters, in a quarter, you're not going to be able to have a big partner come up, show up, implement and deploy. Yeah. yeah um, so we've inf informally, you'll see the, like you'll see on some of the recent 10 threads, um, like the API owners, when they're sent off, they'll say, that sounds great. That seems like a good idea. Do you have someone lined up to use this? And so then, yes. And so, but the next, another layer, like, okay, but are they ready to use it now? And in fact, that was, uh, it was an intent for accessibility um, annotations, I believe, where they said, do you have someone lined up? Yeah, but they're not ready. They said, well, why don't you come back when you have the partner ready to actually use the trial? But yeah, something, maybe codifying that would be a good idea. At least that source of uh, friction or failure, let's say, would, would be captured. At yeah, yeah. How are we, when are we supposed to go to? I, I think we have a couple, we have, okay, we officially have two minutes. I'm happy to, I'm in no rush, so. Is there any other questions or? Okay, so like I s just uh, um, to wrap up, so you know I'm Chase J. You can reach me that way. Um, if you're internal to Google, we have inter um, we have GoLink. There's a public public way to get hold of us. Even if the only thing you remember is this console, um, there's a contact us here. That will get that will get to the same the same person, i.e. me, right? All of those will end up in my inbox and someone else's so you don't have to rely on me getting through email. Okay, well, we can wrap it up. Great, thank you.